Seismic Trap is one of the most popular and powerful skills in Path of Exile 316. Maybe you first saw the skill in the context of someone killing a boss in a few seconds last league. Maybe you played it as your league starter. Maybe it's your boss killer right now. There's a lot of information out there about Seismic Trap. Some good, some bad. So this build showcase is going to focus most heavily on the gearing aspect, and I'm going to try to bring some clarity to Seismic Trap gearing. If you're curious on how the skill itself works and how to scale it, be sure to check out my Seismic Trap mechanics video. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if Seismic Trap will survive the nerfs in 317, but based on past experiences with overpowered skills that have 4 plus scaling factors, there's a fair shot that it will. And I'm sure someone's going to say it, so I'm going to say it first. Yes, the character I'm playing and showcasing is extremely expensive, but no, Seismic Trap is not expensive to play or to build, and that's part of why this showcase is going to be so long. I'm going to be talking about my gear, which costs hundreds of exalts, and I'm also going to be talking about how to gear a character when you have zero exalts, what to look for, and what to build up towards. If you like seeing mechanics for how the various skills of Path of Exile work, be sure to sub to the channel and ring the bell, because I'm going to be talking about other PoE mechanics in the future. If this video helps you fix your gearing for your seismic trap, be sure to leave a like and share it with a friend who's also struggling. And finally, if you want to look like Captain Jack Sparrow, you can purchase the Curse Supporter Pack through my Nexus. When you do, you'll be helping to directly support me. And you can also directly support me for as low as $1 a month over on my Patreon. So now, let's start talking about some of the gear I'm using, how to craft it, cheaper alternatives, and in some cases, maybe some more expensive alternatives. To start with, the weapon. Cold Iron Point is incredibly efficient. Many of the build's auras, along with the damage skills, are all tagged with a physical modifier, meaning it scales everything. I get extra armor from my determination because I'm using Cold Iron Point. I get extra damage from Herald of Purity. And of course, it scales both Seismic Trap and Exsanguinate. If you're just starting out, any sort of plus one fizz gem or plus one all spell combined with spell damage weapon is perfectly fine. But because you can crangle or corrupt a cold iron to get even more value out of it, it's really hard to beat. A perfect weapon would probably be something like plus one fizz, plus one all spell damage spell crit crit multi with the temple mod for trap duration or trap throwing speed. But good luck finding that any place outside of standard. For my offhand, I decided to differ from what most people are doing, in that I swapped to a shield. Especially once you have all sorts of other additional gem levels from cold iron points, from your amulet, and potentially a corrupt on your items. Extra gem levels aren't that impactful. And the build doesn't have all that much life, even though it has incredible defenses. So a shield with a little bit of block, some more life, and decent damage scaling from either spell damage spell crit or plus one gem spell crit was a really good way to scale the character and round out my defenses while keeping my damage high. Now, if I used another triple damage cooldown point, that would be about 20% more damage. But you can't overkill bosses any harder in PoE, so it doesn't really matter. And this way, there's definitely situations where I didn't die, and I would have if I wasn't holding the shield. A lot of these rares weren't all that expensive, but if you want a cheaper alternative, or something that's a little bit more League Start appropriate, you could use something like a Saffles frame defensively, you could just use that cooldown point, you'll die a little more, but it's not going to ruin the build or anything. Or you could use a Kongming Stratagem. That won't add any damage, but it does add a great additional layer of defense in the form of secondary pseudo-spell suppression. It won't help you too much while mapping, but it is an excellent choice for bosses. Next up, the chest piece. And this is where I see a lot of people go wrong. So many people are using a corrupted Tinker Skin. Stop it. Please seek professional help. Tinker Skin is a great item on day one or day three of a league. It's a terrible item one month into the league because it doesn't really do anything that you want from it. Instead, go for a Carcass Jack. Carcass Jack is an amazing basic chest that scales really well into endgame when corrupted. It gives you damage, it gives you AoE to help get to 270% to maximize your overlaps, and it has some life on it. It's relatively common, so corrupting it and crangling it's pretty easy, and it's a really well-rounded choice. If you want the absolute best, I would say your best in slot is a Brass Dome. 5% all Ellie res helps show up your elemental defenses. The total crit immunity is great, as if anything's going to kill a build with relatively low HP and a lot of defenses, it is crits. And a bunch of armor, because you need about 30-40k armor before the build starts feeling really great. Brass Dome fixes a lot of the problems you have, especially those like getting blown up to a crit or dying to a physical spell. Now, boots are one of the few places where my item is actually the cheap version. I'm just using some crangled at Ziri's steps. They cap up my spell suppression, they have move speed, they have life, but they're far from my best in slot boots. The best possible thing you could get would be spell suppression, cooldown recovery rate, resistances, life, and movement speed. 
If you're feeling really spicy, you could even have Elusive on crit and do some sort of self-attack with Whirling Blades or Shield Charge, both to cover your movement skill and also give yourself Elusive. You'd want all this on either a Two-Tone or a Fugitive base, but at Zeri's step do the job well enough, they're super cheap, they're easy to get, and my build was already good enough that I didn't feel like min-maxing for that last step as the economy started dying and people swapped over to events. If you're playing the super early league, I'd suggest Deerstalkers. It's a great way to have a pseudo link for your Exsanguinate, and Deerstalkers are even cheaper than at series step, so you could easily corrupt them for plus gem levels, maybe move speed, armor, or spell suppression. Now, if you don't have your Exsanguinate in Deerstalkers, you're probably going to want them in your gloves. A good pair of crafted rare gloves will be your best option. You stick Exsanguinate in here, and it scales your clear skill. Or if you make a really nice pair, you could even stick Seismic Trap in and have a strong pseudo link and then run a six link exsanguinate in your chest. I crafted my gloves by rolling them with frigid and scorched fossils for the suffixes. The goal is spell suppression in combination with trap support, trap and mind damage, or advanced traps if you're putting seismic in. If you're really lucky, you'll hit a resist, socket to spell crit multi, or something like that. Then I added the plus two gems area of effect to reach my 270% AoE cap using suffixes cannot be changed and veiled chaos. I happen to get lucky and get life, but even with crafted life, it would be good enough. If you plan to run Seismic Trap in your Glove Links, I'd strongly suggest double corrupting them until you hit two of any of the following implicits. Level of Socketed Gems, Level of Socketed AoE Gems, Level of Socketed Duration Gems, or Level of Socketed Trap and Mind Gems. The Helmet is a slot where I'm really hesitant to use anything else. Devouring Diadem just does so many things so efficiently. It lets you fit in an additional aura without using an Enlightened support, it fixes mana issues without Seismic Trap having to be reliant on Life Tap support, and overall it feels really good to play with. You can of course pick up a rare to get extra spell suppression, or drop an aura and run life tap until you get a diadem. The plus two gems is mostly just a nice little bonus and absolutely isn't needed, but I would highly advise the enchantment for plus one wave. See my mechanics video for more information on how that works. When it comes to the rings, I'm using two circles of guilt, and you definitely don't have to feel guilty about giving this a pass. Rare rings, especially vermilion rings, are a great way to show up your life, Get a good bit of resistances, which is especially important if you're not using a mage blood, and also fix some stats. On the other hand, if you're doing a super high budget version, there's almost unlimited min-max potential in getting better and better and better implicits on your circles of guilt. These cost me about 45x. They don't improve a build by that much. I did it because I had the money and I could afford them. But you'll be totally fine just using a pair of solid rares. You'll have enough damage to kill everything without issue and you'll have maybe even a little bit more defenses and tankiness than I do currently. As one note, you can't use a Curse on Hit Assassin's Mark ring, because sadly, traps and mines don't trigger Assassin's Mark, although I guess if you're going with the Shield Charge Elusive stuff from earlier, then you could use the Curse ring, and you just have to Shield Charge or Whirling Blades through the boss occasionally. For the belt, there really is no replacement for Mage Blood. It's an ultimate item for a reason and undeniably the strongest thing to exist currently in Path of Exile. Being able to permanently apply flasks at 95% increased effect is amazing. It makes your build so much tankier, gives you permanent leech, makes fixing res without rares an absolute breeze, and also is great for running around fast in town. That said, I don't expect everyone to have the money for a 400x belt, and you can take care of your resistances pretty well by using rare jewelry. If you're going to craft a belt for yourself, I suggest spamming a Stygian Vise with Essence of Zeal for Trap and Mind Throwing Speed, or Essence of Envy for Chaos Res. Use an Elder or Hunter base to try to get increased life as a prefix, and gain access to an Eye Jewel for additional damage and utility. Alternatively, if you want a really cheap belt that's great to use before you have Cluster Jewels, go with a Sunblast. The 80% reduced trap duration means your traps go off a lot faster, which makes your damage feel much better, and it costs basically nothing. Finally, the Amulet. If you're min-maxing, you want plus one Fizz Gems, plus one Dex Gems and you want this in combination with either life as a prefix or maybe crafted AoE, and then crit multi as a suffix and some resistances if you're lucky. Again, the suffixes here aren't super important, it's damage if it's nice and it's damage that I have, but you don't absolutely need it. At the end of the day, you can slap together any plus one fizz, plus one dex gems, and it'll be good enough after your Awakener's Orb. If you want to get really spicy, you could also use something like Ulnatol's Vow to add an additional support to your seismic trap, or Leadership's Price to get even more max res and scale Brittle to fix your crit chance and drop crit strike support. And if you want a really cheap alternative, just go for any crit chance or crit multi amulet with some decent life and res. For cluster jewels, I'm using two large fizz clusters, I'm aiming for res nodes, and then any of the damage nodes. Having the additional scaling for armor and evasion is quite nice, but definitely not needed. Having double damage is cool, but again, 
anything that says increase Viz damage is probably going to be good enough here. What's important is Verez, as this build is kind of starved on resistances. For the mediums, I'm using 4 times set and forget. This is what makes my trap damage so immediate. It reduces the trap duration, so they trigger far faster. And it gives me increased area of effect, which helps me get to the magic 270% where all of my seismic waves will overlap. I'm then using 1 arcane pyrotechnics to give myself arcane surge. And for the rest, my preference is gorilla tactics to get a bit more damage. I'm using one Megalomaniac to add Aura Effect, which allows me to use Smoke Mine, and this is honestly more of a personal preference. You could just as easily use Dash, Flame Dash, Shield Charge, or Whirling Blades, and replace this with another Set and Forget Gorilla Tactics cluster. I then filled all the empty Jewel Sockets with rare jewels, aiming for Life, Trap Flurring Speed, and Crit Multi or Chaos Res. Again, these items can be as cheap or as expensive as you need. An example of a cheap one might just be Life, Trap Throwing Speed. An example of a super expensive one might be life, trap throwing speed, and double crit multi. If you have any other questions about the specific gear or the tree in my setup, please feel free to refer to the POB down in the description. I've also included a less expensive version for anyone who wants to play this but doesn't have the money for a mage blood, or maybe for someone who plans to use this to farm their mage blood, as it is certainly excellent at farming bosses. So how does the Seismic Trapper play? Interestingly enough, Seismic Trap itself doesn't really run up against a weakness. The closest I found was in Heist it doesn't trigger or damage enemies through doors very well. Who would have thought PoE's greatest enemy could defeat PoE's most powerful skill? Most of the time, Exsanguinate was the weak point. In a suit of 5 link, the damage just isn't up to par for uber content like Wave 30 Simulacrum, or even something like Delve at depth 600 or so. The clear starts to fall off. Now don't get me wrong, for the rest of the game, Exsanguinate blows through everything, it has great coverage, and watching the blood ribbons fly across the screen is oddly satisfying, in a sort of creepy way, as if you're a vampire lord. To solve this, what I did is I swapped out Cluster Traps for Charge Traps, which causes the Exsanguinate to do a little bit less damage, but is great for Charge Gen on single target or for uber content. And I just then relied on my Seismic Trap for as much clear as possible, because it has a quite wide-reaching area of effect anyway. Trapper in general is delayed damage, and this can feel bad, which is why I value the set and forget so highly. Again, if you want a cheap solution, be sure to use the Sunblast Belt instead. My basic playstyle is to run through enemies, so phasing or shield charge is incredibly helpful. Throw your traps down, and then double back if your loot filter makes an interesting sound. If not, just assume everything's going to die behind you, because, well, it will. Especially if you happen to have tossed a Seismic Trap. If it's a tanky rare, or a boss, or a feared, well, Seismic Trap will absolutely lay waste to an entire area. Anything within will be dead almost immediately, and it'll often stun enemies, which makes them relatively harmless. This build has gotten me some of the fastest kill times on bosses, including the feared and Cirrus since Ritual League which is kind of terrifying when you think of your original scope and power of Harvest back in Ritual League. Because Seismic Trap does so much damage when scaled properly, I put a huge emphasis on defenses and quality of life in my setup, especially when it comes to gearing, passives, and auras. For example, I could easily run Zealotry and I'd have a bigger number in POB. I'd be higher on the POE Ninja pointlessness charts, but it wouldn't really play any better, and Determination keeps me alive through situations that would have otherwise killed me. And so I'd rather something that feels good to play in Path of Exile than something that looks good to play in Path of Building. Of course, the build isn't perfect. Defensively, I am a bit weak to degens, which is why when I stood in the Shaper Beam in my feared video, my health dips scarily. This bypasses a lot of my defenses, especially fizz degens. And offensively, Seismic Trap isn't the best at dealing with constant swarms of enemies, so if you're looking for a Simulacrum Farmer, I wouldn't really advise this over something like a Spider Summoner or my Strength Stacker. But the power of this build is undeniable. It's easily the best bosser in 316, and it could very well be the best bosser in 317 as well. It has the damage of a glass cannon and the defenses of a tank. You can start it on nothing and min-max for thousands of exalts. So if you want something that's your entire league build, this is a great choice. I'm quite happy to showcase this Seismic Trapper, as it's one of the best and most well-rounded characters that I've seen for the skill. Special thanks to Diggs, whose character I adapted and used as inspiration in making my own version. He also looked into a lot of the breakpoints for Seismic Trap AoE. But now, I have a question for everyone who stuck around for what's ended up being a rather long and rambly video. If you can't do both, such as on League Start, do you tend to play a glass cannon boss killer that'll die if you make one small mistake? Or do you prefer tanky builds that won't kill the boss that quickly, but won't die to the boss either? Personally, I always try to go the tanky route, because at the end of the day, I know I'll be able to eventually invest and min-max in the character to kill the boss faster, but I probably won't be able to invest and min-max defenses if the character just doesn't have a good foundation to begin with. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, 
And again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you and have a great day.